Hello, hello. This is my episode seven of my Sewing Bee Synopsis. And if you haven't caught up yet, you can catch up now on BBC One iPlayer. And I'll see you in a bit. Hello there, my name's Sam and you're watching Sew That Sparkle with Sam. And this is my weekly vlog about the Sewing Bee, where I kind of round up a weekly synopsis, easy for you to say, of what I thought of the latest episode. And this episode was 90s week. And I have to say, it was up there with one of my favourites. I really enjoyed it. I think the main reason I enjoyed it was all the music. Um, my 90s, I was alive in the 90s. And uh, my 90s time, my 90s de decade was a very busy one. I turned 21, I got married, had three children. So I was fairly busy in the 90s, I had three babies all in the 90s, just about. And um, yeah, so really enjoyed the 90s one. Me and my husband watched it together and he was very much enjoying the music too. We had a few um, disagreements about, was that was that 90s? And But I think that as you get older, there's a few blurred lines on what happened when. But the episode was such fun as ever. I'll talk about Sarah's outfit. She wore a um, a kind of blue jacket with just one button. It was an extra long um, jacket with some leopard print leggings underneath. She looked um, super smart and definitely very 90s. Just a little note on what some of the other contestants were wearing. So Tony did say that he's, um, his kind of fashion sense, if you like, hasn't changed at all since the 90s. And I always love uh, me and my husband always comment on the shirts that Tony wearing, is wearing, so um, they're obviously his kind of thing. And um, yeah, he did say that, you know, he learned to dress himself in the 90s and he's just kind of stayed the same. So he had another one of his funky shirts on this week. The other outfit of note that I really enjoyed was Mia's. Now, Mia wasn't actually born in the 90s, but I loved her. She had a knitted jumper and it said, I am luxury on it. Um, I thought it was fabulous. <laughs> I'd love one of those. <laughs> I thought it was a really fabulous jumper and um, and yeah and it, it didn't bother her you know she was like oh the 90s have had revivals and you know she it, she seemed really confident in what she was doing and that was really nice. And then the other outfit of note from the contestants was Vicky's in her kitty camo is what I'm gonna call it because I don't really know what else to call it. It was, um, yeah, it was fabric and it had cats all over it, but the cats were so close and intermingled together. You couldn't actually, it took me a while to figure out that they were actually cats, um, but it did have like, like a camo effect to it. And she wore a two piece kind of open, do you call it a shacket? Like a shirt jacket. Um, yeah, kind of two piece um, combination set. And she looked absolutely brilliant. So. So yes, that was that was the outfits in 90s week. On to the first challenge. The first challenge, as ever, was the pattern challenge. And this week, it was the turn of the cargo pants. Now, cargo pants was definitely a staple of the 90s. One of the things um, that me and my husband had a little bit of a discussion about last night was neither of us could remember cargo pants ever having an elastic waist. And this pattern had an elastic waist. Um, it had fly opening um, and a closure, but it had an elasticated waist. Now, I'm pretty sure I will. I definitely wore cargo pants and my husband definitely wore cargo pants in the 90s. And I'm pretty sure that they never had an elastic waist because I'm pretty sure that if they had had an elastic waist, I probably would have worn them more often. <laughs> but hey ho. The pattern challenge was, um, so it was quite a tricky construction. The pockets in particular, they were like bellowed pockets. So they kind of opened out. So obviously you could get all your bits and pieces in them because that is one of the features of the cargo pants. Um, the pattern had lots of pieces. It also had a fly zip, zip opening. And I have to say, that's one thing that I do find quite tricky. I've, I've, it's one of the reasons why I'm a little bit shy away of making trousers because, for, you know, zips and fly zippers do frighten me a little bit. So, yeah, it was a tricky construction and not all of the contestants got finished um, because of that. So it's a, it was a four and a half hour challenge, which is a pretty good length of time for the pattern challenge. 
but the contestants needed all of that time. And to be honest, I mean, in four and a half hours, there's no way that I would have finished that garment. It would have taken me all day. So I think they all did really, really well. So I am just um, bobbing down to my notes because I've got all of my notes. I will pop pictures up. If you want to know where people placed in all of the um, challenges, I pop it all in the notes below so you can just have a little look of where they all came. And um, yeah, and I'll pop pictures up if and when I can find them appropriate ones. So Lizzie, she chose um, camo fabric for hers, which I thought was a really, really good choice for two reasons. I think camo fabric is very kind of 90s. It's very cargo pants and also it hides a multitude of sins with sewing. Um, if you make a few little tiny mistakes that perhaps show up less on the camo than they would on a plain fabric. I have to say though, Lizzie's um, were not the best in construction. They weren't finished. The zip wasn't positioned well at all. Um, and she kind of knew it and she made the decision not to move it and just kind of go with it. And I do think that she would have been better off moving it and had a better finish. But I think if she'd have moved the zip, she still would, she would, would have had even less time and wouldn't have been finished. So yeah, so that was quite, um, yeah, it was quite tricky for Lizzie. Vicky, she chose a very plain blue fabric, which again, I kind of thought was very brave because you, you know, if you choose a plain fabric, it does show up everything, but they were bang on. They were absolutely fantastic. They were neat. They were finished. They were, I don't want to say perfect, but they were pretty close. Um, Lauren, she chose a plain, plain fabric. She chose a very light kind of tan fabric. Hers were a little untidy. She'd had to have done, she had to have done lots of unpicking because she did find it very tricky and they also weren't finished. Mia also chose a plain fabric. Um, I have to say Mia's weren't great. Um, they weren't finished and to be honest, they weren't quite wearable either. <laughs> so that was, yeah, that was a bit disappointing for Mia. And it, and she just shows it on her face. She just, when it, when the um, judges are disappointed, you know, you know, like when your mum says, I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed. And it kind of just makes you feel like icy cold. <laughs> Mia shows that on her face. And I just, I felt really sorry for her. And um, Tony, he chose camo fabric, which again was a really good choice. His was, I have to say, his was quite a messy finish to his, but I, I think he did actually get them finished. Um, they just weren't perhaps the tidiest. Asma chose a plain burgundy fabric and hers were pretty good. I think Patrick or Esme, I can't remember now, I think Patrick described her seams as bouncy. She was one of the contestants that chose a slightly less structured fabric, which again in the 90s you would have used for cargo pants. Um, and I'm not sure that her seams were that bouncy. I just think that it was the fabric choice that she, you know, that she used. Um, but again, very good. Um, yeah. And so as I show, as I said, all the, the placings are all below. So on to the transformation challenge. Now, this one, they got one hour, 30 minutes. And Patrick made a very tenuous kind of link to the fact that 90s was all about house music so the transformation was to transform household textiles and trimmings into a 90s icon dressing up character costume which i thought was a bit of a reach <laughs> but they had some very interesting household textiles to choose from they had lots of fur fabrics and faux fur fabrics and uh, bath mats and shower curtains and rugs and tablecloths and bed linen and all of that kind of thing. And then they all had to choose a 90s icon to make a dressing up costume from with what they, you know, which, with what they had, which were what they could choose. Um, and I have to say, me and my husband looked like straight away looked at each other and just went Spice Girls. <laughs> it's gonna have, gonna have to be the Spice Girls um, because 
obviously they're iconic in the 90s and they dressed in a very kind of standout way that you could instantly tell who they were that was their branding and that's what they did um and we did did have three spice girls which i wasn't surprised about at all so tony postman tony went straight for the union jack fabric and he did a ginger spice dress lizzie not quite sure what lizzie was thinking um, she was kind of going for a kind of girl raver based on the prodigy, but all of the prodigy were men. So it wasn't so much the icon, it was kind of like a iconic look, if you like. Um, and I have to say, hers wasn't my favourite. It just um, It just didn't look very polished and very finished. Vicky did another ginger spice, but she did a two-piece instead of a dress. And then Asma based hers on J-Lo. I think hers was a Jennifer Lopez one. And, um, and yeah, um, I mean, I do remember Jennifer Lopez from the 90s, and I don't remember her ever wearing anything like what Asma had made. But her costume did look really nice, and it did look really nicely finished. Yeah, I just thought it was a bit it was a bit random but it was very nice and then Lawrence I loved Lawrence I would have worn Lawrence in the 90s I would have 100 percent well even though I'm not a leopard print person at all and I wasn't back then but the idea of the wide leg trousers and the, and the kind of boob crop top um with the ring fronted um I would have so worn that kind of design and so she did scary spice and it looked absolutely fabulous and then Mia did Madonna because of course you know why not so she did the kind of pointy boob cone bra <laughs> look iconic for Madonna I think she's I think she used um PVC tablecloth material you know that's kind of gives you a bit of a sturdiness to make the cones and they and it did look really great she she chose really carefully her trim so her kind of costume came together really nicely. So yeah. So it was it was an interesting challenge to say the least. So when they went into the made to measure challenge, um, I have to say it was it was looking Lizzie was looking a little weak because she'd had kind of two very um, kind of difficult challenges. So. I was watching it really carefully. I was getting really worried about Lizzie and I'm thinking, right, you're going to really have to pull this out of the bag for this made to measure. In fact, they all really do now because they're getting to the point where like any anyone can nail it and anyone can fail it to quote Patrick Grant. And that is very true. We're so close to the end now. Any, any one of them left could win it. Um, so, yeah, so I was kind of really rooting for Lizzie at, for the last challenge. So the made to measure, they were given five hours for this made to measure. And for some reason, Patrick Grant seemed to think that there was such a huge amount of time, five hours to make a dress. Um, anyway, that he, he was expecting something really opulent and stunning. Um, and he definitely got that. But I thought that every single contestant every single one of them did so well to get their dresses up in five hours because they all worked really really hard on them so it was a made to measure it was a 90s supermodel dress that was the brief um and i have to say the thing that made my heart sing the loudest was that vicky decided obviously Vicky's got a plus size model and in the 90s there wasn't very many plus size models around I mean there absolutely wasn't um, but she did do her research she found one that she had kind of really really liked her look and she'd emulated that look um, and yeah and I was I, I was kind of extra rooting for Vicky for that reason um, but yeah so as I said it was a true it was a really really truly tricky challenge but they all did really well so i'll go through them all one by one and i'll pop the pictures up so tony's 
Tony's I would have totally worn in the 90s. You would have seen me hanging around in that in the 90s. He went full length bodycon and it was like a slash two-tone colour and it was like a camel and black colour. He executed it really well. I mean, if you don't get that, you know, if you do a two-tone and you don't get that seam absolutely bang on, it's never going to look nice. His was lovely. It looked, it looked super chic. It really suited his model well. His criticism was his neckline was a little bit wonky. And it was, that was fair comment. But I have to say, his model looked stunning, his dress looked stunning. And once again, he'd kind of, you know, he'd made a really wearable, beautiful dress. Lizzie. Lizzie um, used like this lovely gold satin material and she made a bias cut kind of slip dress which again was very big in the 90s. Um, hers was like, I think they described it as a rock chick dress. Um, it was very beautiful. Her model, it fit her model very nicely. She'd done fantastic. Her spaghetti straps were like light pieces of spaghetti. They were so super thin. She did a really good job on that. However, I think it was partly to do with her fabric choice and partly to do with time. Um, it just, it wasn't finished the way that she would have liked it to have been finished. There, It was, um, yeah, the hemming wasn't quite right. Um, yeah, there was just a few things on it that didn't look quite as polished as they could have done. Vicky's. Vicky's was a beautiful red kind of corset dress with all of the boning. She, she wrapped all of the boning and so the boning was on the outside. And I have to say, it was absolutely stunning. Boning isn't really my thing, but oh my goodness, it was it was stunning. It looked so beautiful. Her, you could see her model was very comfortable in it. Um, she did a manar about whether she wanted to put straps on it. I'm so glad she didn't. I'm so glad that she left it strapless because I think it looks stunning. One of the criticisms was that originally she was going to put some boning around the middle. And I think that both Patrick and Esme would have liked to have seen it like that. And I perhaps would have liked to have seen it like that, but I didn't mind that it wasn't there. Um, and it was a it was a good decision because she had a finished dress. And I think if she'd have done all of those things, maybe she wouldn't have had a finished dress. So yeah, really beautiful, really beautiful. And then there was Lauren. Lauren did another, like Lizzie, she did another bias cut slip dress. Hers was in a kind of more kind of charcoal-y grey colour. Um, it was very, very simple and it was very, very nice. But if you're going to go really, really simple, your finishing has to be top-notch, perfect. And it wasn't. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't perfect. Um, Mia. So Mia did her take on the Liz Hurley kilt pin dress. And I was really looking forward to seeing this. She ummed and ahed, she chose a really tricky fabric. She chose um, black velvet. So um, yeah, she did cho choose a tricky fabric to use. And she'd gone to a charity shop and bought lots of chains and, and apparently she'd spray painted them all the same color of gold. I would have loved to have seen the process of that and how she'd done that. Um, but yeah, and her dress came down the runway and honestly, it, although it looked lovely, it just didn't look finished. And she didn't have enough time to put all of the chains on. She had to hand sew all of the chains on and she just ran out of time. So although it was beautiful and it was um, well sewn, it wasn't it wasn't as finished as, um, as Mia and definitely Patrick wanted it to be. And then there was Asma's. Well, quite frankly, all I've got to say about Asma's is how <laughs> like wowzers 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 how on earth did she get that dress done in five hours it was it was exquisite it was like I, I'm, I'm struggling i don't normally struggle with words i am struggling to find the words that i need to describe it it was absolutely beautiful um asma is a bra maker she likes to make underwear um so she went for the bustier dress like the kind of 
underwear is outerwear style which was very big in the 90s uh, and it had like a pleather skirt like fishtail pleather skirt on the bottom um, and it was a very fitted kind of bra top and then it had leather straps that looked like kind of belts along uh, in the across the back and it was just stunning her model looked amazing in it it and the the whole everything everything about it um i think she did get one criticism criticism from the judges and i can't remember oh esme said it was a little bit too long to be honest i i think that was a little bit nitpicky because it was absolutely stunning and as a consequence no surprise there asthma won garment of the week um and I did, I'm going to be really honest, I did feel a little bit sorry for Vicky because Vicky hasn't won Garment of the Week yet. And I've liked lots of her garments, but I have to say it was a no-brainer. Asthma's was phenomenal. Um, even though Vicky's was also wow, wow, wowzers. Um, yeah, asthma's, asthma definitely was the rightful winner of Garment of the Week for this week. So, really sadly, and I do feel really sad about this is that Lizzie's time came to go home and she did get really tearful um she lost her mum quite young I think she was only 12 and her mum was the person that taught her to sew and so she kind of you know she'd kind of dedicated it all to her mum and she was just like so glad that she did something to honour her mum and it did yeah, did really tug at my heartstrings and they're all friends now. So them going home now is really, really hard. I'm finding it more and more difficult to, to see any of them go home. So, yeah, so that was my roundup of episode seven. Next week is Fashion Icon Week. So that could be quite interesting. So I don't know what they will do for fashion icons or which fashion icons we will be seeing, but I'll look forward to, to watching that for you. And then I'll meet you back here, same time, next week for my next synopsis. So if you like watching these videos, don't forget to give me a like. It really, really helps out my channel. And if you don't subscribe, why not think about it? Totally free. So don't forget to sparkle. Have a great week and I'll see you really soon. Bye for now.